Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Barbados following a ruling by the Caribbean Court of Justice. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, July 26. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The CCJ ruled there was not enough evidence to convict the men. Vincent Edwards and Richard Haynes, who were in prison since 2007, were charged with the 2006 murder of Damien Aline. Aline's body was discovered by his girlfriend not far from her residence on the night of August 11, 2006. He was pronounced dead shortly afterward. Following the arrest almost one year later, Edwards and Haynes were convicted of murder and sentenced to death. In 2015, they sought leave to appeal to the CCJ. And on Tuesday, in handing down its ruling, the regional court held that the convictions could not be upheld because the sole evidence presented by the Director of Public Prosecutions, the DPP, was not sufficient to ground a conviction having regard to the provisions and the general spirit of the Evidence Act, which the Parliament of Barbados passed in 1994. The CCJ said the only evidence linking the appellates to the murder was their alleged oral confessions made to police officers in separate interviews with the officers while at a police station on July 19, 2007, almost a year after Aline's murder. Still in Barbados, Prime Minister Frendel Stewart says he is willing to meet with social partners who have been clamoring for a meeting to discuss their concerns. He was speaking in Parliament on Tuesday, a day after thousands of Barbadians joined with trade unions and the Barbados Private Sector Association to press the government to meet with the social partners over recently implemented budgetary measures. The Prime Minister gave the assurance during a debate on a resolution brought by the opposition to address government's impasse with the trade unions and the private sector. Stewart did not give a date for the meeting but said it would not be held behind closed doors. Meeting requested, I promised it. It is going to take place. But as I said, it's going to take place in full glare of the public. I will communicate, as I said, as I said in my reply to the head of the private sector association, I will communicate to him and the other social partners when that meeting is going to take place. But I know this, it is not going to take place in secret. It is going to take place in full glare of the public so that Barbadians can see where it is we are going. Bahamas Prime Minister Hubert Minnis is not happy with the way the opposition leader Philip Davies expressed his desire for a meeting. Davies sent a letter to Minnis requesting a meeting to discuss the recent arrest of former parliamentarians for financial misconduct in office. He described it as political witch hunt. The letter was also circulated in the media and online. Minnis said that's not in keeping with protocol. If he wanted to speak to me, he knows what to do. If he sent a letter to me, and he subsequently had the letter given to the press and social media, he's not talking to me. He knows protocol. He he's going to tell it. Absolutely, the phone still work. He can call me. No. N P O. No. Whoever does wrong will be dealt with. Be they P L P, be they F N M. Once they have done wrong. Then the laws will take their course. Let the chips fall where they may. Sure if he have facts, then give it to the police. Don't hold. Don't tell me about it. Don't tell the press. Give it to the police. My life is an open book. I have nothing to hide. Over in Trinidad and Tobago, the Court of Appeal has granted approval to the government to appoint two provisional liquidators to guard the assets of CL Financial. This ruling follows an initial decision not to appoint the liquidators. The government. 
is seeking to recover a $15 billion debt left from the 2009 bailout of the conglomerate's insurance subsidiaries, Colonial Life Insurance Company and British American Insurance Company. The judges noted the company is losing money every day and that the longer the company continues, the more the assets depreciate. Both sides represented had expressed plans to head to the Privy Council if the court did not rule in its favour. Still in the Twin Island Republic, government is proceeding with plans for a legislative solution to the crisis in the judiciary arising from the appointment of former Chief Magistrate Marcia A. Caesar as a judge and her resignation over 53 part heard matters. Attorney General Faris al Rawi says government will call Parliament into session during the August recess to debate and pass the legislation. And he says the opposition's support isn't needed. There is a legislative recommendation proposed by the DPP. We have drafted a law to match with the legislative proposals recommended by the DPP. It was the June correspondence from the DPP to the AG, which the PM referred to when he first made mention of legislative changes to address the 53 cases left abandoned when Marcia A. Caesar was elevated to the High Court. The draft, Ms. Arawi says, has gone out for public comment and seeks to amend two pieces of legislation to give the DPP more scope or power to act. The bill is essentially proposing an amendment to Section 23 of the Preliminary Inquiries Act and then a certain similar clause for the summary offenses, summary court, sorry, and, and it will include a broader range of options um, as to when the DPP can exercise his power under Section 23 for a voluntary indictment. And get this, if the draft makes its way to a bill, the opposition's parliamentary support isn't necessary. During the opposition leader's meeting with the Prime Minister, she already indicated her unwillingness to support legislative remedies. It is simple majority law as drafted. That law, if it stays in the current form, does not require the opposition's participation. Notwithstanding that fact, it was appropriate to at least signal the position to the leader of the opposition. But that doesn't mean the opposition's recommendations would not be considered. As a matter of fact, he will be taking it to the opposition when the AG gets feedback in two weeks' time. Um, if necessary, um, I will seek the permission of the cabinet to um, move the parliament in the vacation period and treat with it. And as to calls from legal quarters for the PM to trigger section 137 of the constitution to initiate an investigation into the chief justice, well, the AG says it's a bit premature. I don't think that we have crossed the threshold at all in VOCA 137, but in any event, there is legal action now afoot. Um, Mrs. A.S. Caesar has, through her attorneys, applied for leave for judicial review for the very question which is um, asking for an answer in many quarters. The matter involving Marcia A.S. Caesar versus the President and JLSC will be heard on Thursday at the San Fernando High Court before Justice David Harris. And that report was from Uvashi Tiwari Ruplerine of CNC3 News. Still to come in Caribbean news, nine police raid human traffickers in Jamaica. The details to that story and more after the break. Join the Caribbean Broadcasting Union and its regional and international partners at the CBU Annual General Assembly, August 21st through 24th at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel in Nassau, the Bahamas, under the theme, Digital Developments in Caribbean Media. Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Dr. the Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis, will welcome delegates during the opening ceremony. Guyana's Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Kathy Hughes, will offer a keynote address on digital developments in the region. See the launch of the UNESCO-sponsored Manual of Social Media Guidelines for Caribbean Journalists with guest speaker, Jamaica's Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn and hear from international media players about the new developments in digital television standards in Europe, the US, and Japan. And this year's Caribbean Broadcasting Awards Gala at the Atlantis Resort Paradise Island is not to be missed. Call 246-430-1007 to book your space in the three-day conference and exhibition. Don't miss the CBU 48th Assembly at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel in Nassau 
from August 21st through 24th. Discounts on flights to the assembly on the official airline, Caribbean Airlines. In a place where legends start, the beach is just the beginning. So live a little for the exhilaration and the color of every moment where time is and life is a spirited event. Immerse yourself in the culture, the music, the people, the island. Love Antigua and Barbuda. Embrace an experience that leaves you breathless. From cricket to sailing week to carnival and more. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. Who will be the next Miss World Bahamas? You be the judge by voting for your favorite contestant. Download the Miss Bahamas app or log on to MissBahamas.net. Subscribe to the Miss Bahamas Club. Click on to your favorite contestant and vote as many times as you like. Your votes help decide who makes the finals and takes one step closer to the crown. And on the final night, club members will help to choose the new queen. Make your girl's dream come true. Vote for your favorite Miss World Bahamas contestant today. Welcome back. As Jamaica prepares to observe World Day Against Trafficking in Persons, police may have stumbled upon a human trafficking ring as they staged an early morning raid in Back Road, St. Catherine. Forty people are in custody and head of the Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Stephanie Lindsay, says there are minors among them. So far, they are still processing the individuals that were picked up. They picked up approximately 40 persons, males and females. Based on what I gather, the females are, they are from different parts of the country. So far, at least two of the girls have been identified as underage, and they are now waiting to verify the ages of other, some of the other girls that were picked up at the location. So far, they have detected one possible case of human trafficking, and they have found three persons of interest that they were looking for, for, for cases of murder and shooting in the Portmore area. Serious economic crisis could be on the horizon for Guyana and the Caribbean as various aspects of the United States Food Safety Modernization Act kicks in. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administrative website, the Food Safety Modernization Act was passed in 2011 and began implementation in May of that year. Countries who do not comply could see their exports being rejected from the U.S. Royden James of HGP Nightly News has the details. Guyana and other Caribbean countries that export seafood and agricultural products to the United States can experience a serious economic downturn if they are not compliant with the United States Modernization Act. Some components of that act have already started to kick in. This is according to Managing Director of Technological Solutions Limited, Dr. Andre Gordon. Speaking to Nightly News on the sidelines of an event on Monday, Dr. Gordon said that some components of that act have already begun to have a negative impact. So already, even before this year, and this year is very significant, um, exporters would have seen more of their goods being held at U.S. port of entry. And manufacturers in the U.S., because this is not discriminatory, it affects all food. Manufacturers in the U.S., people in food service would have seen a lot more uh, visits from the Food and Drug Administration and inspection. In 2016, the first component of what is called Preventive Controls for Human Foods rule came into being. That rule basically makes the full impact of food safety regulations mandatory on all persons involved in the food industry. That act, that component, kicks in for all exporters to the U.S. from the Caribbean because of our size on September 18th this year. So in essence, if you are not aware and you are not prepared by September 18th, even if you had no problems before, you're going to see um, a significant change in the way your goods are handled. Equally as important, even small exporters who do not export to the United States, but supply companies that export there will have to come up to speed. So if they work with DDL, if they work with banks, if they work with New GPC, if they work with Sterling, and I just call those names, or any other, if they work with the Bihari Group, any other exporter to the U.S., if they work with the seafood companies, 
If they supply anything to them, they fall under this act even though they don't export anything. Dr. Gordon suggested that exporters are now buckling under pressure as compliance day draws near and the date for some has already passed. Why is this important to Ghana? Well, I don't know if most Ghanaians know that Ghana is the fourth largest exporter of sauces. Mm -hmm. Sauces and spices in the Caribbean and that's significant because Ghana really only started exporting significantly maybe about five to ten years ago. Also, Ghana is one of the largest seafood exporters to the U.S. as well as other things. So it covers sugar, it covers rice, everything you export that could end up in the U.S. that you supply is covered. That once it's an agricultural item is covered by this act. So what it means is that you could see a significant fallout, economic fallout, if companies don't comply. And in Newsline Sport, a West Indies loss to Zimbabwe leaves the youth ODI series tied. Stay with us. Sport is next. Do you want a real Barbadian experience with peace and tranquility? A home away from home feeling? Come and stay at Best E Villas. We offer two amazing locations to choose from, Prospect St. James or Christ Church. Plan a staycation for your anniversary, birthdays, summer or winter breaks, or any special event. Best E Villas is located in close proximity to our lovely beaches. Call us now at 246-425-9751 or visit us at bestevillas.com and make your booking for the best in villas. We bowl off the midweek sport with cricket as Baton Meltdown cost West Indies on the 19th another series win as they suffered a 26 run defeat to Zimbabwe on the 19th in the second youth one day international on Wednesday. Chasing 237 for victory, the Caribbean side were well placed at 155 for four in the 34th over, but they lost their last six wickets for 55 runs to collapse the 210 all out in the 45th at Peterhouse School. Opener Cree, that's Keegan Simmons, top scored with 49, while Alec made 46. Matthew Patrick and Baswick Yadram each scored 42. No other young West Indies batsman managed to make it to double figures. Seema Dion was the best bowler with 3 for 44, while off spinner Harrison finished with 2 for 34. Zimbabwe had earlier raised 236 for 9 off their 50 overs. Ryan Murray made 59, while Dion hit 45 and Wesley scored 38. The final game of the three-match series is scheduled for Saturday in Harare. Trinidad and Tobago Knight Riders are iron victory in this year's Caribbean Premier League, which bowls off next Friday. They play St. Lucia Stars in the series opener. Pacer Ronsford Beaton has been speaking with TV6 Sports in, Sp in Port of Spain on the team's preparation ahead of the tournament. Come next week, the slam-bang version of cricket will be played across the Caribbean with millions of fans viewing the matches. The 2017 CPL is here and part of the action is Trinvago Knight Riders fast bowler Ronsford Beaton who is raring to go. See I'm here in Trinidad a bit early, uh, getting some preparation. Uh, this year's CPL is looking to come out and do better than last year. Uh, no, last year we had some ups and downs, uh, losing some early games. So just looking to come this year and you know better give a better performance than we did that from last year. 
Any um, goals that you have set yourself with the ball? Uh, I have my goals, yeah, but my, right now my main objective is to uh, get in a team two steps further than last year. That's uh, winning this year's CPR. T20 is all about scoring runs at a frenetic pace, especially coming down to the end of the innings. As such, the 24-year-old has been doing some extra work with the ball. I've been working very hard on my dead bowling. Uh, bowling consistently, yakas and slow balls. So yeah, as a dead, you can look up for something new for me. Regarding the composition of the Trinbago Knight Riders led by Dwayne Bravo, Beaton has given the squad a thumbs up. Yeah, we are a pretty balanced team. Uh, a lot of experience in our batting lineup, uh, in, in our bowling lineup as well. Uh, yes, we all know that the captain, he is an excited guy when he gets ready. Uh, so just looking forward to work with him again. Trinbago Knight Riders play their opener away from home on August 4th against the St. Lucia Stars, formerly known as the Zooks. Football now, Jamaica's reggae boys will be looking to win their first CONCACAF Gold Cup tournament on Wednesday night when they face the United States in the final at the Levi Stadium. The reggae boys are the underdogs in the competition after defeating reigning champions Mexico 1-0 at the Rose Bowl Stadium in California on Sunday night. This is the second consecutive time Jamaica has made it to the finals of the competition after beating the U.S. 2-1 in the semifinals two years ago. They subsequently lost to Mexico 1-3. Coach Theodore Whitmore says there is no pressure on the team. Kickoff time is 9.30 Eastern Caribbean time or 8.30 Jamaica time. Trinidad and Tobago play Ecuador on Wednesday night in a friendly international. It is part of the Soka Warriors preparation for the 2018 World Cup campaign, which is due to resume in September. The match kicks off at 8.30 at the Estadio Pacifico Banco. TNT will play without several of their overseas-based stars, including Kenwin Jones and Kevin Molino. But other key players, such as goalkeeper Marvin Phillip, Hashim Asia, and Hukton Hector are part of the squad. New players Nicholas Benjamin Jr. and Kiran Clark will be looking to impress coach Dennis Lawrence. Defender Carlyle Mitchell is back on the team after a period of injury. He says he expects it to be a tough battle, but he is looking forward to the match. Well, I'm very excited for this game after being out of the national team for so long. Not so long, but probably like since January, the last real competitive match I played. I'm looking forward to this game. It will be a very difficult game because Ecuador, they are a great team, you know, and I think we prepare well for this game, depending on the time we get to prepare ourselves. And I think it's a great test for the team and, and players as well. You know, um, because we have a, our next difficult game on September 1st against Honduras, so we can use this as a, as you know, like a good practice game for the local guys. The Guyana Football Federation is stepping up plans to develop women's football with the hosting of a summer camp for young girls. The GFF has launched the Guyana Girls Academy and Football Camp. The first began on Wednesday, targeting girls aged 7 to 11 and will run until Saturday. Football officials in Georgetown are hoping that increased focus on the women's game will boost their chances of success at the international level. We get more in this report from HGP Nightly News. The Guyana Football Federation, GFF, in collaboration with the Guyana Girls Academy, GGA, have embarked in a partnership that will help to develop women's football from the grassroots level in Guyana. The GGA camp is a four-day football camp geared towards giving young girls a peek into the GGA setup as well as to create more interest in girls' football. The camp will allow Guyanese girls to get a taste of the GGA and girls' football with an elite coaching staff in a professional environment on and off the field. Head of the Guyana Girls Academy, Colin Wilson, who is a women's coach based in the USA, explained that his organization, who partners with the GFF, also collaborates with APSA. Guyana will be participating in the CONCACAF qualifiers for the Women's Under-17 World Cup beginning on August 9th, and squad depth is one of the challenges of the team. Colin Wilson, head of the Guyana Girls Academy, explained that. So with this camp, we're starting off with the younger girls, and we're hoping to build from there so that we can get as many girls as possible to create as big of a player pool for Guyana so that they can compete at the highest levels in the future. Technical director of the GFF, Ian Greenwood, noted at the launch that women's football in Guyana is behind the world standards about 20 years. 
The GFF is keen to be associated with the GGA because women's football development is high on the organization's agenda. Switching sports now, three athletes have been withdrawn from the list of athletes who will represent Jamaica in the upcoming World Championships. The event will be held in London next month. We get the details from TVJ's Keon Raynar. 17-year-old Dejo Russell, who clocked 13.32 seconds to place fourth at the National Senior Trials last month, had been listed among a 30-member strong male squad for the World Championships in London. However, the management team headed by J3A's first vice president, Ian Forbes, has since said that Russell, along with the two other alternates, Kenroy Anderson and Andre Clark, were inadvertently named on the original list. Forbes, who spoke with TVJ Sports from the team's pre-championship camp in Birmingham Tuesday afternoon, explained that the alternates will remain on standby. Well, the alternates are still there, just that at this point in time, they are not necessarily officially a part of the named team. But in the event that anything goes wrong, God forbid with any of our athletes, they'll be called upon to fill in. So the alternates are actually in, in the UK? Not necessarily so, no. Not necessarily so. But they are... Like a doctor on call, uh, you are prepared to move at any given time. So they are supposed to be prepared in the event that they are needed and summoned, and they make themselves available in short order. It is believed that the exorbitant cost per athlete for the 10-day camp in Birmingham was a major factor in not allowing the alternates to travel to the UK. As it stands now, Olympic champion and world leader Omar McLeod, Hansel Parchment and Ronald Levy will contest the men's sprint hurdles. With Kenway Anderson removed from the list, national champion Ewan Blake, Rashid Dwyer and Warren Ware will run the 200 meters. The third alternate who was removed from the list is 400 meter hurdler Andre Clark, leaving Jail Hyde, Kemar Mort and Ricardo Cunningham to take part in the one lap obstacle race. The removal of Russell, Anderson and Clark means the men's squad has now been trimmed to 27. The women's squad remains at 29. However, our sources say that 400-meter hurdler Geneve Russell and other fourth-place finishers at the national trials who have attained the qualifying standards for their respective event are also on standby as alternates. Meanwhile, manager Forbes also revealed that Michael Clark, who served as head coach of the last few championships, is also no longer listed among the coaching staff for London due to personal reasons. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. In a place where legends start, the beach is just the beginning. So live a little for the exhilaration and the color of every moment. Where time is and life is a spirited event. Immerse yourself in the culture, the music, the people, the island. Love Antigua and Barbuda. Embrace an experience that leaves you breathless. From cricket to sailing week to carnival and more. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a good night.